in listen only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today again for another webinar on social media. Our topic today is the ever exciting concept of social ROI. How do we track it? What does it mean? How do we build dashboards around it? All that stuff that uh, based on all the questions that were asked prior to the webinar, when you all signed up, uh, many of us asked about uh, things relating to sharing this with our C-suite. So we'll talk about a couple of those questions here in a minute. So uh, I'm Dana Van Hubel of Marketing Savant, your host for the webinar. Uh, two quick questions that are always asked that I want to get out of the way before we get going. Uh, one is, are we recording this? And two, can we get the slides? And of course, the answer is always yes. Those of you that have attended before know that uh, everything is recorded and available uh, free of charge after the webinar. Usually within about 24 hours, things are posted. So feel free to, uh, once you get the email notifying you that that information is out there, share with your coworkers, colleagues, or anyone else who you might uh, who you think might find this information useful. So let's start out with a couple of key questions that you asked. Out of the couple hundred folks that, uh, that signed up, we had about 50, or 50, 60 questions or so, and most of them fell in this, uh, in this you know, set of uh, key questions, um, lots of different questions, but but uh, these are probably the best summaries. What are the key metrics? Um, many of you asked, you know, how do we sell this to the leadership in the organization? If I am the leadership in the organization, what should I be looking for uh, for my team in terms of social media metrics? How do we measure the impact uh, of social? Who's doing it well? What are the top few three, five, seven things we should be measuring. You know, is this even a great tool to achieve what it is we're trying to accomplish, uh, you know, with social media or with our marketing in general? Uh, so all kinds of questions about, you know, measuring the value of social. And a uh, couple quick things just before we go any further. If there are any uh, any tweetable moments that you find out of the webinar, I uh, appreciate you guys sharing those using the hashtag social ROI, just social ROI. And, of course, there's a lot of other folks using that. That's kind of the general discussion on social media ROI, so be mixed in with that. Uh, but, you know, just watching that tag this morning, there's some data coming out uh, as recently as, this week that says uh, social media is returning on the average investment at a rate of 40 to 1, 40 times return for each dollar invested. Uh, I don't know that all of us are going to see that, but uh, certainly by the time we're done today, we'll have some idea of the tools and concepts and uh, criteria we can use uh, to at least determine whether or not uh, you know, we're approaching that uh, that kind of return on our investment. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, kick this off and talk about what we're going to learn today. Uh, one of the most important things for me in, in our organization is always figuring out how to close the loop. We put effort in, we engage in social media, how do we close the loop? How do we understand that what we're spending in social media is actually coming back to us in terms of leads and sales and everything else that we're expecting? Uh, the next thing is we want to understand a little bit about developing those key performance indicators that tell us we're doing a good job in social media. And then that framework that we need to build, this, the dashboard, if you will, which for most organizations that aren't using a high-powered dashboard, Radian 6, Focus, some of the other social media listening and engagement tools, uh, you know, this does come back down to a mix of tools, Google Analytics, your other web metrics uh, tools that you might uh, have in place like HubSpot, you know, for monitoring individual user behavior, um, your email tools, all of those things, uh, you know, factor into an overall dashboard. And we'll talk about that uh, and, and some of the tools that are out there for developing those. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, bringing in this concept of social ROI into the organization. It goes well beyond just the numbers. There's a lot of other concepts that uh, yeah, I think are really valuable here that we should discuss. And then um, we may touch a little bit on the difference between ROI and ROMI, but that's a bit uh, bit academic. So uh, we'll save that to the end. If we get to it, great. If not, uh, not a big deal. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about social media measurement and just the the what the state of the nation is on return on social media right now before we get into uh, the five key steps that uh, – that we want to cover on on social and, and how to get uh, you know get to really calculating ROI. Uh, social media is different 
than say traditional advertising we all know that but in what ways well the benefits accrue over time right as we build a network that network doesn't go away like the ad in last month's magazine goes away uh, you know the consistent presence is really important you know we can blast out an email and see some real return on that investment but if we just blast out a tweet once and then don't come back we rarely see any return on that investment right social media requires uh, you know a lot of consistency constant engagement uh, you know the always be marketing mantra is, is ever present in social but it's really uh, you know much more critical because if we're not present we're not available uh, you know we get very little return social media ROI can come in a number of different forms it can come in uh, you know, from the bottom line perspective of reducing costs, it can come in the top line perspective of increasing awareness leads. It could come in uh, in other angles in terms of how it generates uh, the equivalent of uh, PR value, column inch value, things like that. You look at some of the uh, great cases, you know, tied in NASCAR, you know, Oreo and the Super Bowl and, and some of these sort of real-time marketing cases that have come up in the last year. And their tracking uh, of the return on investment isn't necessarily in direct sales. It's in, you know, Tide, for example, got, you know, eight million worth of what the equivalent paid media value would have been out of simply using, you know, Tide to clean up, a, you know, a crash on a NASCAR track and all the social media buzz that ensued from that. Uh, you know, how do we put a how do we put a value on that for our organization um, in terms of social media? So it doesn't always come in, you know, in this straight funnel format. Although we'll uh, try our best to to make that work. A uh, couple of quick uh, challenges that organizations are seeing with social, and then we'll talk about some of the positives and some of the returns that that organizations are seeing. Some examples as well as we go uh, throughout today. The, uh, the biggest challenge, uh, you know, with respect to social media, of course, is the time, and that goes back to the consistency uh, element. Eye Contact, which is an email marketing provider, did a study last year and looked at this and said, well, organizations, you know, VPs of marketing, what are you really struggling with? At the end of the day, they're struggling with, once they get past doing the actual social media work, it's figuring out, you know, what was it worth, right? And that's, a, that's not an insignificant challenge. What we do know, however, is that there are some really great data points out there that tell us that social media is working. Genius.com finds that, you know, a quarter of all of their leads coming in through social media actually convert into real sales opportunities. You know, think about all the different channels of leads coming into your organization. How are you tracking those? Do we know what the conversion rates are? Do we know what our cost per lead is? Uh, you know, and that brings us to a big question that organizations need to answer before often they tackle this social media question, and that is, do we have some of these other metrics in place? Do we understand customer lifetime value? Do, you have, do we understand uh, cost per lead? Do we understand some of those other acquisition costs vis-a-vis -vis other components of our marketing mix? And then how do we measure social against those? Um, the reality is what we often find in, in classes and in, in, in consulting is that a lot of organizations don't have those basic metrics buttoned up tight enough in order to really pit social media against other marketing tools, channels, and opportunities, um, you know, to determine a valid, uh, you know, valid return on investment anyway. So, uh, you know, some of those challenges in understanding social ROI, uh, you know, go beyond, uh, well beyond social. Uh, but most organizations that do track social ROI are finding that, you know what, at the end of the day, it does have a positive return on their investment. Altimeter and Wet Paint, um, Altimeter is a social consultancy. Wet Paint is a, a wiki company of all things. They did a study a couple years back and found out that organizations that were social mavens, high presence, high engagement, did in fact have positive revenue growth that they could correlate back to that social presence. And of course, those that didn't have great social presence, again, this is at the time, things have changed a little bit, uh, you know, didn't have the same growth pattern. So, you know, we know that correlation does equal causation in, in social media. So just a couple of quick bites here before we go uh, into the actual specific components and, and really the five areas that we've laid out that we look at when we start to get on the path of, of calculating ROI in an organization. Now, before we get into this in, in great detail, 
uh, you know, the bottom line in all this stuff is your mileage may vary, right? I mean, some of the things uh, that we talked about here, maybe you're a little further down the road, maybe they don't apply. Um, sometimes we're talking nonprofits, for-profits, NGOs, K-12 schools, higher ed. Everybody wants to determine what the return is on their, you know, time and dollar investment social. Uh, so what I encourage you is to look at this from an open-minded perspective and, you know, and adapt to your organization or think how you might adapt it to your organization. The very first thing that we want to discuss and, and we'll cover today is just a level setting on expectations. And we'll talk about simple thing of, you know, how do we break down ROI? How do organizations, um, you know, look at return on investment? What are the most common expectations that organizations have? You know, and how does your organization match? Uh, and then we'll look at uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, setting key performance indicators. That's really the most important thing in the expectations uh, component here. Uh, we'll also look at a, a case of uh, ROI on Facebook that's pretty compelling. Next we'll talk about establishing the metrics and the baseline and really that's where we start to actually do some real work here is getting that baseline of metrics and then understanding that baseline plus so we start out with you know social media here or you know traditional marketing here plus social media what actually happens what are some of those metrics that organizations use uh, you know there's some quantitative there's some qualitative and then there's some user oriented metrics that we want to discuss as well the third piece is really getting down to building that dashboard you know we look at it we'll look at a couple of examples um, you know that we'll parcel to and uh, you know how do we do that you know at the end of the day it comes down to some great Excel spreadsheets often and then tying this back to the KPIs um, the last piece we'll talk about linking the social media activity or to real opportunity in the organization and we'll talk about things like mapping social to the decision journey uh, for customers and things like that uh, some of the uh, you know pretty heavy-duty work but important stuff there and then uh, we'll look at correlating that uh, you know that activity and that return uh, you know to what we're putting in whether it's through consultants or through software or what have you We'll look at a, a quick case from Nissan and how they determine some social ROI, and then talk about a couple of resources um, before we uh, before we wrap up today. So, uh, in the next uh, 40 minutes, hopefully, we'll get to uh, everything we need to uh, to help you get from no ROI to understanding social ROI. So, let's get going. We'll talk about expectations first. ROI is really a profitability metric. In fact, marketers typically hate it. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, not the least of which is it's really a business metric. Uh, it's not something that was designed by marketers. Um, you know, a smart marketer would never have developed this type of thing uh, to measure their activity, right? Uh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, David Ogilvy and others, you know, uh, marketing history uh, tells us that, uh, you know, the great marketers, great advertisers were always fans of, of return. Uh, but it is a challenge, right? We need to understand the benefits minus the cost. Um, you know, minus the, or times that investment and then divided by the cost to really get an understanding of, of that return that we receive for each marketing and in this case, each social media dollar. Academics aside, let's move forward. When we think about investment in social media, I want to break this down a little further because investment goes really to human capital, much less so the actual physical capital, uh, design work, ad placements or anything like that. So the spend is typically in hiring people. So social media community managers, social media um, coordinators, social media directors. Uh, oftentimes there's some outsourcing involved as well. Video production, blog post production, copywriting, uh, you know, apps that we might create. And then of course, finally, there are actually, of course, social ads that we can uh, buy across most of the networks at this point. Um, but that's usually the least of our concern. In fact, you know, most organizations, when they started budgeting for social media years ago, they would take it away from, you know, another area that was a direct advertising outlay like search engine uh, marketing or pay-per-click ads or things like that. Uh, but really, uh, what we look at here is how much time, uh, you know, that's that's the real investment. You know, what is that full-time equivalent uh, person costing us to do? The return, of course, can come in a lot of different ways, and that's really what we're here to discuss today. Most organizations set social media expectations along four levels. They start out with reach. And this is very simple for us to, to measure. And when we get to building the dashboard in step three, we'll, we'll look at this and, and go through a couple of the components that we use specifically um, to ascertain social media reach. Uh, but that really looks at, you know, 
where does our message get to? You know, we have the opportunity to advertise in a magazine. We have the opportunity to go to a trade show. We have the opportunity to, you know, get an interview in a trade publication if we're B2B, uh, do an event locally if we're B2C. You know, and we look at that reach. We look at the cost per person that we're able to reach. Same thing with social media, right? We want to understand, you know, what type of reach, what type of impact are we going to have on that audience? The next component to social expectation is our expectation for engagement or advocacy. We know that Facebook is the second most trafficked word of mouth vehicle, meaning all the word of mouth conversations that happen offline are, you know, of course, the first most trafficked word of mouth vehicle. But then the rest of that typically happens online. And by advocacy, we're looking for people to actually get into that two-way dialogue and share their perspective on brands. Depending on which research report you look at, it's estimated that up to 40 percent and if you look at some of the a little bit more uh, liberally done reports, up to 50% of the conversations that happen on Facebook um, or in social media uh, overall actually do involve brands. So brands are being talked about, you know, uh, throughout the day. Our measurement really needs to center on where is our brand being talked about. This is where things get important in these last two components, and that's conversion and retention. Uh, and conversion is really what happens when we ascertain how social media has impacted, um, you know, a sale at the store, has impacted a meeting with a sales rep in B2B, has impacted a donation uh, in, you know, higher ed or a nonprofit, um, or the non-cash conversion. You know, have we moved people up the ladder from, you know, reading a blog post, signing up for the newsletter, to downloading a white paper, to attending a webinar, uh, to ultimately calling us in to see if we can help them out. Um, in whatever capacity it is, uh, you know, that our business serves customers in. Uh, that's really where the rubber meets the road, and that's where the greatest challenges are typically in organizations, is capturing all of those potential, um, you know, inbound opportunities to convert, and then tracking those conversions all the way through to the sales process, through the sales process and through to the, you know, the ultimate sale. Some of us have systems in place for that, and some of us don't. You know, even some of the largest organizations and, and divisions within very large organizations don't have adequate systems to track conversions and sales from social media. You know, we look at small businesses like, you know, a chiropractor's office or a retail store or even a restaurant. Uh, in some of those organizations, even though they have limited staff and no real focus on marketing or limited focus on marketing, sometimes have a better opportunity to capture some of this conversion and sales data, uh, you know, because they touch every customer and are able to really get those questions out there of how did you find us, you know, tracking some of that activity, you know, tracking sales activity with no social media on a day, tracking sales activity with social media, and they can start to get an idea of what their return is. And then, of course, retention. Uh, and this gets into the decision journey and customer lifetime value. And retention isn't something we're going to focus on a lot today because it's a lot more um, – a lot more involved from a calculation perspective, typically, than, than um, you know, some of us might want to get into today. Uh, so we'll save that for another webinar in the future on social media and how it improves retention. The last piece, which doesn't necessarily typically fall on the, you know, the marketer's radar, but I'll tell you that this is one of the areas where we've seen significant impact in organizations, even though marketing can't always take credit for it, and that is the impact on operational efficiency, and that could be anything from uh, reduction in customer service staff, reduction in phone time, um, you know, reduction in overall, uh, you know, cost to serve the customer. You know, we look at that as an organization like Intuit that makes QuickBooks, you know, and they've consistently reduced their cost to serve their base of customers through the online channels, through social media, through some of those interactive and digital properties, uh, you know, and that's really changed uh, you know, how they operate and really change their uh, their cost and revenue structure significantly. So think about that as well. You know, how do we engage online to improve operational efficiency? What most of you asked for in terms of social media expectations, organizations look at, and this is uh, something that came out of Internet Retailer, and these numbers are pretty consistent year to year, drive traffic to the website. You know, and, and of course, that's that's always been one of the top demands of anything digital, whether it's web ads or communities or social media or anything we're doing online, drive traffic to the website, which puts the onus on us as marketers to really have great websites, persuasive design, persuasive copy, 
very well done and, and, and fully tested landing pages, you know, and as we're going through those criteria, you know, persuasive design, landing pages, all that stuff, um, you know, even down to some of the more advanced technology of tagging all of that traffic and following those tags through the visit uh, and conversion path. Uh, you know, we all want that traffic, but we have to look in the mirror uh, at ourselves as marketers and say, are we doing everything we can to optimize that inbound traffic coming in from social media? Raising brand recognition, right? Videos do that, blogs do that. Um, you know, of course, that's a, a little bit harder to measure, say, for those of us that are in CPG and have maybe some of the, the research functionality to really have a, a good solid handle on that quarter to quarter. Um, improving a brand's reputation, you know, we've seen that in both large and small business. Um, you know, it's hard to put a value on that, although we can tell sales year to year and quarter to quarter. You know, as we start to improve our reputation and credibility, we've actually seen this in organizations where they've improved sales 20, 30 percent quarter over quarter by really managing that online reputation. So it does translate into real dollars. Uh, you know, although the, the measurement, the sort of one plus one equals two is a little more difficult. Increasing sales, um, you know, improving retention, and of course, uh, bolstering satisfaction stores. Uh, and, but what we mean by that is uh, organizations that track NPS or net promoter score uh, typically look at that, uh, you know, and, and monitor that satisfaction score. So narrowing the road a little bit here on, uh, on our expectations, the action item that comes out of this first step is for us to do a couple of key things. One, it's to step back and really list out what it is that we expect social media to do for us and, and what we're expecting to happen as a result of our engaging. And I will tell you from you know a reality standpoint, and let's just go back a second here, driving traffic to the website, that's absolutely a realistic expectation of social. We see it all the time. We see it manifest in even the newest channels like Pinterest, where we know now that in Pinterest, for better homes and gardens, as an example, again, a bit of an outlier, but Pinterest drives more traffic to their website today than Facebook and Twitter combined. You know, are they achieving their objective in social media by driving traffic? No doubt, no sweat, it's absolutely happening. That's a realistic expectation. Increasing sales is not always a realistic expectation. In fact, in B2B, um, we rarely see a very direct correlation between a sales lead that came in and a tweet that went out or a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post. What we do see, though, is those organizations that really have applied systems. So, for example, for every Twitter follower, they follow up with them, determine a need, you know, approach every Twitter follower as a prospect. We see organizations that do that that find up to 15% of their sales that year actually came in from Twitter. There was an interesting case study of a web design company that does that, and they are almost religious about it. And that's the kind of you know, discipline we have to have if we're really going to get that kind of lift, uh, that kind of sales lift. You know? uh, above that, we're looking again at other KPIs that are a little bit less uh, rigid like website traffic. So picking key performance indicators will start from the bottom. We won't go through all these. Um, and again, you guys will have the slides afterward uh, to kind of work through some of these on your own. Uh, but thinking about social media, what are the key performance indicators that we're looking at? Are we looking for retweets? Are we looking for mentions of the brand name? Are we looking for viral activity? Are we really caught up in our clout score or some of the other you know, made up online scores, which you know, we're not terribly big fans of, um, but they're good fun vanity scores. Um, you know, what are we looking for in social media? You know, engagement, number of comments, number of reactions, number of likes do matter, especially as we look at you know, the black box that is Facebook's edge rank and things like that. You know, all of those metrics actually matter and we do need to pay attention to them. But we need to figure out and what we're trying to do out of each one of these components of the KPI ladder is find a couple of key performance indicators that we watch week to week to make sure that we're on the right track and if we're not you know we pull whatever whatever levers are necessary in order to get back on track uh, channel promotion search engine visibility and link building uh, we'll pick that out as an, as an example you know we know that we want increased visibility for the organization we know that organic traffic drives the organization's visibility and also uh, drives the organization's performance at the website 
Uh, you know, as we take over more and more of that search real estate for key terms that are embedded in every place from our LinkedIn page to our uh, pins and photos on Pinterest, you know, what is that doing for us in terms of visibility? How does that offset what we might have spent in the past on search engine marketing and optimization? Um, so that also factors in. So we might look at that as a key performance indicator. Customer behavior. You know, we look at things like conversions and bounce rates from social inbound traffic versus non-social inbound traffic, traditional traffic, Google, you know, direct type in traffic, things that came in maybe from, you know, advertisements uh, out in the uh, web, etc. Customer satisfaction. You know, do we have customers recommending us more in social than those who are not in social? Uh, you know, of course, then we get into the real meat of what we're looking for. Uh, you know, the top two items here, leads, sales, service, lowering acquisition costs, and again, we look at key performance indicators. The idea here isn't to have, you know, an entire performance indicator soup. It's key performance indicators, one, two key items from each one of these components on the KPI ladder, all the way up to the top where we understand the actual contribution that social media is making. This in and of itself is not necessarily easy work. Uh, you know, this is great. You know, we can talk about it for an hour in a webinar, you know, but the real, real work here uh, happens, you know, when we get back to our uh, desk after this or, you know, grab a couple of slides and start to really work through with our team, what are those KPIs that we're monitoring? What do we know to actually drive real business performance in our organization? And, you know, how does social media influence that? So uh, it's a multi-step process, and uh, we're just getting started. The last thing that we want to then determine here, you know, is we want to have a good handle on those uh, ROI objectives for social. What is our expected payoff? What do we need to do in order to get there? You know, what are we doing today? What do we need to change? You know, are we blogging once a week? And we realize that blogging three times a week, you know, would increase our conversion rate by 22%. You know, is that 22% based on our understanding of cost per lead and value per inquiry and all of those other things actually worth, you know, bringing someone's time away from, you know, marketing copywriting to say blog writing to get that, you know, 22% increase in traffic or leads or what have you. You know, once we understand these numbers, and we'll talk about attribution a little bit later, you know, we can really decide, uh, you know, what levers to pull. And, and most importantly, working on that other, you know, big issue that we saw from CMOs and CEOs in the first couple of slides, the amount of time that social media takes. If we understand the value we're getting, it's very easy to justify the time, right? Uh, and then under what circumstances, you know, with all of these uh, things being equal in social media, uh, you know, are we actually going to really accrue knowledge and accrue value, uh, you know, from social? It, one quick step back from the expectations before we get into establishing the baseline and metrics. This is a really fun case. It's a, it's a couple of years old now, uh, but it's a fascinating case that uh, Rice University had actually done a study on. It was the first of, the, uh, of its kind at the time, and there have been others to replicate it, but this is the original if you will. They did a study of a, of a local chain of restaurants called Dessert Gallery um, in and around Houston. And uh, what they found uh, was a group of customers that were fans versus non-fans. And they looked at the activity of those fans to determine, you know, and again, this is just Facebook, but are those fans that much more valuable? You know, is it worth our time to be spending all this effort on Facebook every single day, you know, we've got someone dedicated to it, is it worth it? And what they found actually is, is not, not only is it not surprising, but it's also very much in line with everything that we know from decades of research on building customer community. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a paradigm, if you will, for social ROI, it's very closely aligned to the paradigm of building customer community. Harley Davidson, Jeep, IBM, Intuit, you know, all those others that have gone before us in doing that, you know, have these numbers pretty well down. But at the end of the day, here's what it looks like. People made about one-third more visits to the stores each month. We know that in customer community, customer communities, uh, people in community, sorry, are typically worth about one-third more in lifetime value than those not in the community. They spend 45% more of their eating out dollars, so in terms of greater share of wallet, they've got greater mind share, 
greater visit share, greater share of wallet, and they also spent more. So, you know, what do we do within, you know, restaurants as an example? And again, this is them understanding their key metrics. That ticket size, of course, is a key metric. You know, can we add dessert? Can we add a drink? Can we add an appetizer? You know, can we add something else uh, so that we increase that ticket size, which increases, um, you know, the overall revenue, which increases tip size for the wait staff, and everybody's happier. Uh, they spent one third more. That's very significant. The last piece here. Uh, go, uh, you've all been asked this question. Welcome about how to likely Go to Webinar. To Web events do made easy with a particular organization. Uh, you know, how likely are you to, uh, you know, repatronize this organization one through ten? You know, nines and tens are those people who are uh, uh, the, uh, what would you call them, the net promoters, if you will, sorry. The uh, other question that we ask, though, in net promoter, and there are several, is uh, the likelihood that you are, that you have a greater loyalty to that organization. And the folks that, uh, that replied, you know, in the affirmative, yeah, you know, we have greater psychological loyalty toward dessert gallery. Um, you know, were those people that were from the, uh, you know, that were from the Facebook set. So uh, this is a, a proof positive of some of the real return, um, you know, that we see uh, from organizations that are really investing in social media. So let's talk about the second step and and uh, move forward here. Uh, the next piece is establishing baseline metrics. And this is where we look at some of the things that we're tracking. Uh, you know, we look at uh, some of the things that we've done in the past, how has social media influenced them. But at the end of the day, if we're doing nothing else in social media, we're keeping score. So let's talk a little bit about some of those things that we do to keep score. Uh, this is actually a, a, an interesting graph that came out of a recent uh, report by Headstream. In fact, there was a blog post on the site um, a couple weeks ago or last week about it uh, that talked about some of the top things that the top 100 social brands do. These are the things that they m measure in terms of those sort of social benchmarks. They look at engagement. They look at, you know, post to fan post ratio. They look at interactions. They look comment to post, things like that. These are all things that as we get to the dashboard in a few minutes, um, you know, we'll see some of these come back in terms of how we're actually calculating. But, you know, what we're tracking in terms of base, baseline metrics, these are all the things that we want to capture, you know, on day one. You know, maybe some of us have really advanced tracking dashboards, spreadsheets already. That's great. If we don't, we'll talk about building those today. But what we want to have with our baseline metrics is an understanding of, you know, state of the nation, where are things at, and as we continue to learn and apply more pressure to social media, you know, what actually happens. And what that looks like is really pulling together, and this is kind of the unfortunate piece about social, is there isn't yet one, you know, fantastic dashboard that measures everything. We're getting there. We're getting really close with some of the tools that are out there. You know, unfortunately, some of the tools that are doing this are also out of the reach of the average marketer. You know, even, you know, billion, 20 billion, you know, $100 billion companies and their respective divisions in those companies sometimes don't want to spend, you know, two, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month or even, you know, two, five hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a month for some of the tools, uh, you know, that would enable them to get some better tracking and some better metrics around social. But ultimately, it, where, where we draw the line here on, you know, pre-social and post-social or, you know, pre-ROI tracking and post-ROI tracking is really the most critical. Just drawing that line in the sand to determine, you know, here's where we started, now here's where we're really applying the microscope, and these are the metrics we're going to watch, this is what we're putting on the dashboard, you know, these are all the things we need to understand, uh, you know, is really the first step here, you know, after we've uh, set some of those expectations for what we want, uh, you know, to determine in our social ROI tracking. The other thing that we want to look at here is kind of taking this uh, social media measurement and, and uh, turning it on its ear for just a second. This is a piece of uh, research done by Donna Hoffman, who is at Vanderbilt University. Back in the day, um, you know, when we were doing web stuff back in the 90s, in 95 to 99, uh, Donna was one of the pioneers in, in researching, uh, you know, the effects of e-commerce, and she's continued that pioneer uh, attitude in, in looking at not just the investment that we're making in social media, but really looking at the metrics from the perspective of the investments that the customers are making as they're engaging with us. And we know this from a sales perspective. You know, we go back to years ago, the concept of spin selling, situation, problem, implication, need payoff. One of the things that we looked for in spin selling 
was we wanted an advance with a customer and not a continuation. Continuation was, you know, the next meeting in social media it might be the next like, you know, the next click. What we wanted in terms of advance was we wanted that customer to actually invest, read our proposal, see our slide deck, meet with our product manager, so on and so forth, so that we really had this sort of quid pro quo going about an investment of time. And the theory and the research uh, you know, correlated this out to say the more they invested in and with you, um, you know, the, the greater the likelihood over time that they were going to purchase from you. We saw that to be true. Same thing here. Uh, the greater you know, cumulative investment that a customer makes in your social media platform, in your social media tools in your social media conversation, the more likely they are to either be a, be a purchaser in the future or remain loyal. And so what uh, Hoffman and her colleagues put together uh, were a series of criteria, a series of metrics that look at this from the, you know, when we're looking at the far right column, looking at it from the perspective of what sort of activities can the customer do to really invest in the social media conversation of the brand. So it might be references, it might be sharing in a blog post, uh, it might be a like, share, or a comment, uh, it could it'd be a retweet, you know, it could be, uh, you know, someone tagging something in social bookmarking. You know, they really went through, as you can see, all of the different social categories, social sites, to determine, you know, what are some of those activities that people could do that would indicate their investment in our conversation. And thusly give some give us some ideas, marketers, of you know their likelihood to be advocates and all of those things. You can see in the middle column, you know, brand engagement, uh, that's really in brand awareness. You know, those two things are really things that we're looking at as marketers and that we typically measure, you know, but this is encouraging us to take things a little bit further and you know, look at it from the inbound from the customer perspective. Um, it's a great article. It was in the MIT Sloan uh, Management Review a couple years ago. Very easy to find online. Um, at the end of this session here, we'll talk about some resources, and uh, I have a page out there where we'll uh, actually put uh, put the links, um, you know, to where you can find this uh, if this is something that you want to bring into your organization. Uh, let's talk a little bit about qualitative, and then we'll get right into building dashboards. Uh, the last component in terms of setting the baseline is. We look at some qualitative metrics and we try to, in, a, in as many ways possible, make them more quantitative. You know, we try to quantify loyalty, we try to quantify the value of thought leadership, you know, try to quantify that value of, of brand awareness. So, you know, when we have things that are qualitative, and in some organizations, you know, we still look at PR value uh, as qualitative, even though we should be trying to convert that to quantitative, uh, you know, really trying to get to quantitative on you know, on everything we're doing in social media. And this is where it sometimes pays to actually work with, uh, you know, people on your team who are data analysts or a firm that does data analytics. Uh, in a meeting recently, uh, as last night actually, with the Data Analytics Association and looking at, uh, you know, what the, the, the real high-end data analysts can tell us is, you know, they can look at a lot of this qualitative, what to us at face value as marketers might be qualitative data. And by amassing, uh, you know, large amounts of this qualitative data can really pull quantitative insights out that determine, uh, you know, help us understand, you know, uh, determination of customer behavior, determination of, you know, shifts in the market, things that, you know, we don't really see until we turn it into quantitative data and, and put it under a microscope. So um, we don't need to always go to that end, but we do need to think about taking everything that's qualitative, everything that's touchy-feely about social media, uh, and making it into something quantitative, something that ultimately can fit into the dashboard. So let's talk a little bit about the dashboard here. Uh, this is something that uh, I'll talk through uh, because I think it's uh, it, it's really the most critical piece. It's kind of at the apex of our conversation here. Uh, but uh, what you'll find is at the end of the slides here, there are two links, one to each of the dashboards we reference. Uh, these are both Excel spreadsheets. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is what, you know, we still use uh, in order to track because it gives us the most flexibility. You know, if you guys have uh, better systems in place, by all means, you know, please use them. But what we find in terms of uh, communicating the value of social and really shaping our understanding of it uh, and shaping our executives' understanding of it, uh, there's still very few things better than a proper Excel spreadsheet that's, uh, you know, well-tuned to, uh, to our organization's metrics. This particular one 
Uh, we start with looking at social media activity. And this is just capturing all of the major things going on within the social channels. Twitter followers, retweets, things like that. You know, and, and we can get more advanced metrics using tools like Radiant 6 or even simple tools like Sprout Social for 50 bucks a month. We can get a much better handle on some of these social engagement metrics. Uh, but what we really want to understand is, you know, every data point that we can get access to, start tracking it and start really ensuring that all of those inputs and all of those activities are captured so we can start to make some of those correlations down the road, right? A month of data doesn't really help us. Uh, you know, a year of data is, you know, an absolutely amazing tool uh, that we can make some decisions from. Even a quarter's worth of data is helpful. This is from a demand metric spreadsheet. It's actually also the spreadsheet that the American Marketing Association has in their social media toolkit uh, that uh, it's very simple, uh, but it's very effective. We typically use this in small business situations, um, small division situations, or in organizations that just want a very simple uh, yet comprehensive view of their, uh, you know, of their social metrics. Uh, the second thing that we start to look at are those interactions and engagement. And this is actually from Joachim Nilsson from Nielsen Consulting, uh, who has a really, really well done uh, social media dashboard in Excel. And it's got all of these columns, all of these areas broken out with corresponding graphs and, and scorecards, if you will. Uh, this is what we use for larger brands. And, uh, you know, there, again, there's some great work that's been done already out there. Uh, you know, we've seen great work in private companies uh, where we've reviewed their metrics and uh, seen some of the most elaborate spreadsheets I've ever come across. Uh, you know, and if you have a team to build that, that's wonderful. But if you don't, um, it's great to leverage at least, you know, as a starting point, some of the other metrics uh, spreadsheets that people have put out there. So again, after we start to monitor the activity, we want to look at those interactions. This gives us some idea of the engagement that's happening. You know, what type of content do we publish? What type of, you know, uh, information do we share that gets more or less engagement uh, that helps us to then, you know, make decisions about, you know, what do we write? What do we create? What pictures do we take? What videos do we do? You know, what format do we do? Do we do text? Do we do video? Do we do photos? Um, you know, to really determine what gets our audience going. And that's just from the engagement perspective. You know, as we go down here in the next couple steps, we'll look at getting this ultimately to conversion. Uh, something else, that, of course, we want to measure is reach. Uh, you know, what sort of reach are we getting? This then starts to help us have a conversation uh, with our teams internally about, and we've seen this from organizations um, like General Mills, we've seen it from Sage Software, we've seen it from Oracle, Intel, and, and, and many others as well, that these reach numbers help us start to have a conversation about social media versus other media. So if we see reach of X and we know that, you know, an advertisement in, you know, trade magazine Y in our organization gets us, you know, a certain level of reach, and we determine that, you know, sort of apples to apples, we can get better reach, better engagement, better opportunity through social. We have seen organizations organizations shift budget, you know, from one platform to another, or one channel from to another, uh, because they realize they can get better, uh, you know, better numbers, better reach uh, for a lower cost, or get more cumulative benefits over time through social media for the same cost. Uh, the last couple things that we that we measure in the dashboard, and I realize we're just kind of going over the dashboard here, but um, I don't think uh, any of us wants to see anyone build an Excel spreadsheet in a webinar. So uh, uh, we're talking over the high points and uh, the spreadsheet work I'll leave to you guys. Uh, this is where, you know, size does matter in terms of our network. Uh, we know this through email marketing, you know, for years. If we have an email database of 5,000 versus 50,000 versus 500,000, obviously that 500,000 person database is, uh, you know, has a much greater potential for impact uh, than a 5,000 or 500 person database. You know, so social media isn't always about tracking likes, fans, followers, you know, people in Google Plus circles and all that that entails. But we do need to intelligently continue to build that base, continue to build that, that base of people that we influence, um, because ultimately that parlays into word of mouth, it parlays into reach and, um, you know, the network size in social media is one of those things that is really critical, uh, you know, for long-term success. So, you know, going to your CEO and saying, hey, we've got 13,000 followers on Twitter. Well, that might be an impressive number to you. It doesn't mean anything to him until you can really, again, start to pull this all together in a dashboard like this and show how subscribers, followers, and ultimately the size of network contributes to engagement, contributes to reach, contributes to, you know, value, um, you know, within the organization, okay? 
finally, what we try to do, and this is where uh, this is where we really put our thinking caps on, and that is, at the end of the day, we start to pull these items back into the original expectations that we set for reach, engagement, and then ultimately conversion and retention. What you didn't see here, uh, and what would be a, 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 a probably a 4B component um, after the network size, uh, is you know what happens from a conversion perspective, and that's really you know up to you as an organization. How do you measure conversion? Is it sales? Is it downloads? Uh, you know, are you do you always have something to invite people to? You know, for example, our webinars. Um, you know, we always have something to invite people to. We always have a uh, you know a webinar going. We always have a white paper. We always have something that's uh, you know generating uh, new inquiries and new opportunity. And then we map this back to our, you know, key performance indicators. You know, we know that one key performance indicator, again, hypothetically speaking from our earlier uh, expectation discussion, maybe engagement is most important. You know, then we look at uh, the type of uh, search engine visibility that we have. We looked at the type of customer behavior, you know, inbound traffic to the website. We know we can affect that through social media. You know, and then we're able to really start to take those first few components of social activity, engagement, reach and network size and drive them all the way through to business contribution through um, you know our KPI formulas here again it's a little bit of math uh, and uh, you know self uh, uh, as a self-described marketer and, and non-math person math and marketing don't always mix um, you know but for us to really understand and derive value from social uh, you know we need to mix our math and marketing so uh, the last uh, last couple of points here uh, that I uh, want to talk about our link activity, linking our activity and our opportunity. Uh, and, and for uh, this is going to be a little esoteric here um, for, uh, for a moment, but uh, taking uh, things up just a level, what we also want to try to understand through our social media metrics is where people are at in the decision journey. Uh, a lot of organizations are using this right now as sort of a burning platform for change in their company uh, to effect different marketing uh, strategies, what they're trying to do, things they're trying to change, and they're doing studies on the customer decision journey or path to purchase, you know, whatever you call it in your organization, and really trying to understand where does social media fit into that. You know, one through six here you can see, you know, people first considering purchasing, interacting, becoming an advocate, you know, and ultimately, uh, you know, becoming a, a long-term advocate. Where does social media fit into this? Um, again, this is a uh, you know worth a whole webinar. The corporate executive board, IBM, McKinsey, a lot of uh, you know very high-priced consulting organizations uh, with a lot of really smart folks have been working on this uh, challenge as a global perspective. But it's something that we see organizations, especially B two B organizations, really working on um, diligently. Uh, you know, with their internal teams to figure out you know where are people at in the cycle and, and how do we affect that. Uh, the other thing that we need to understand through social media and through the purchase process is, you know, what benefits are people deriving from being engaged on social sites? And this is where some of the uh, some of that qualitative information really comes uh, comes in handy, because, uh, for example, this is a study from the IBM uh, Business Value Group, and they found that. You know, most marketers don't believe that people join social media sites and become friends of brands uh, for, you know, sales and discounts and things like that, when in fact that's one of the top reasons that consumers do it. So you can see a bit of a disconnect there. Uh, the other thing that we find interesting is that we believe as marketers that people want to be part of our brand communities and want to feel connected and want to be part of this brand family, when when you ask consumers, uh, and this is actually a cross-section of B2B and B2C, um, they really don't care. Uh, uh, you know, by orders of magnitude less uh, than what we typically think they care about. So, you know, we can clearly see that gathering some of that qualitative data, um, you know, can uh, you know can really help us out here. Again, tying this uh, back to some of the uh, activity and opportunity, some of the other uh, other opportunities that are out there, capturing complaints, um, you know, looking at opportunities for retweets, shares, reach. Uh, you know, there are a lot of non-financial social measures. Uh, that ultimately go into uh, the social media equation, the social media conversation. Uh, you know, not everything um, that we have immediately gets tied to ROI, which again, 
brings us back to the reason why we need the dashboard and why we ultimately need to, at the end of the day, uh, you know, tie it back to our, uh, our KPIs. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, turning the qualitative into the quantitative. And, uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, we really uh, are challenged with every day, but this does go to the, uh, the issue of linking the social media activity you know, with the real business opportunity. And, you know, for all the great qualitative things, again, someone commented, someone shared, you know, this journalist retweeted us. That's wonderful. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we see marketers celebrating every day in social media because it's exciting stuff. Uh, but it almost all uh, always uh, needs to come back to those numbers in the, uh, you know, in the spreadsheet uh, to help us determine, you know, what's the real quantitative return on investment, calculatable benefit from this. Uh, the other things that we want to determine when we start to link activity with opportunity uh, are all of the conversion opportunities that are out there. Online forums, online sales, reduction in support costs, increase in page rank or search visibility, you know, number of repeat visitors that ultimately have more touches and buy from us, um, you know, by shortening the sales cycle, which we know is a very real benefit in B2B social media. Uh, you know, the number of things we learn about our customers. Uh, you know, there's a, uh, a movement uh, afoot, if you will, in the startup community, um, really prompted by the, the book, The Lean Startup, that talks about the, the, uh, the real, you know, uh, customer intimacy and, and customer viability uh, understanding, uh, not just, you know, like most restaurant tours will do in an area, uh, you know, they'll, they'll say, hey, that's a great location. I think I should put a Mexican restaurant there. Never mind, there's 37 of them, you know, in the city already. Whereas, uh, you know, the, the best startups go through the customer validation process. And part of that validation process is really learning as much as humanly possible about those customers. And that's one of the sort of below the line benefits of social media that organizations typically don't track and they don't have uh, in their dashboards. It doesn't show up. But this is one of the things that we encourage organizations to quantify because as we learn new things, we're able to tailor products, tailor solutions, tailor processes um, that ultimately improve profit and reduce cost and ultimately get us back to that business performance that we're trying to get from social media, you know, even though this may not be, you know, the first thing out of our mouths as marketers when we're trying to sell our CEO or CMO. Uh, you know, on the next great, you know, tool, widget, or concept. Uh, number of newsletter subscribers, downloads, um, you guys get the point. You know, lots of things that we can measure that tie social activity, you know, to real business opportunity. Uh, you know, and then again, we want to be mindful of that um, investment and return relationship, you know, to make sure that we're always monitoring, um, you know, dollars and cents and, and interactions. You know, what sort of investment did we put in? What sort of action and reaction happened? And then what are those financial and non-financial impacts? Uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, what the social media ROI folks live and die by, okay? Uh, plotting our metrics. Uh, you know, we do want to understand uh, not just from the perspective of a spreadsheet, but also, uh, you know, a timeline. You know, the effort we expend, the promotions that we do, the seasonality. You know, social media is also something that, uh, you know, many of us are still new enough at that we don't necessarily know that if we pull the same trigger this year as last year, you know, is it going to have the same effect? So we do want to understand the timeline. Um, you know, so plotting that data, correlating our activities with our outcomes. Um, because remember, social media is a cumulative thing. And so uh, the timeline effect actually does give us some perspective on, you know, what's happened, you know, as we've gained our followers, if, uh, gained followers and built our network. Um, you know, we see that ultimately social media has more and more impact, um, sometimes with the same effort, sometimes with even less effort, uh, you know, over time. The last piece uh, to talk about here is just simply correlating uh, the metrics and, uh, and the activity. And by that, I mean, uh, we're really looking at correlating the amount we need to put into social media to get out what we expect, uh, you know, this is where we start to have those conversations about, you know, can we pay a social media manager? Uh, you know, we've seen half a dozen organizations in the past about 18 months or so just in our area that have added social media professionals to the team. And we see more and more every day. In fact, we frequently get calls for interns and other folks like that as well 
as organizations, you know, start to just step into it. They realize that there's some power. They've had a taste of the value. They've built, you know, around some of these metrics an understanding of what social can do for the business. We do need to have a good understanding on this ROI um, equation, this ROI concept of uh, all the inputs and the outputs of social to really understand where to spend money. Uh, you know, because ultimately we see through all the research that organizations are absolutely bullish about decking more dollars against social, uh, but oftentimes it's still, uh, you know, with a, a lack of uh, some of the ROI understanding. And then uh, let's talk about something fun, and then a couple of resources, and then uh, you know we'll get back to our uh, get back to our day here. Uh, this is an interesting case. Nissan, uh, you know, launched the Cube uh, in Canada after they launched it in the U.S. And uh, what they really wanted to do, because it's typically a millennials type of car or a hipster type of car, if you will, uh, was they wanted to leverage social media, just like Ford and others have done. Um, you know, so what they did is they launched a series of, um, you know, promotions around the Hypercube, and the majority of them were really done through social. Uh, and even Nissan, even a very large brand like Nissan, you know, comes back to the simple things. And the reason I wanted to share the case was, you know, it's simple things that they use to track the impact of this huge brand launch of this multi, you know, billion dollar global company. It comes back to Google Analytics. What happened on the website? Where did the referrals come from? You know, the page views per visitor. Did social visitors spend more time or less time than type in or other folks that came in from Google? And what we really want to do is understand, you know, back at the web, back at the conversion tool, what is social actually doing for us? So what they found was this, and I think this is really uh, extraordinary. Uh, you know, 330,000 visits, uh, increased awareness uh, of the cube, 87%. This is absolutely the most fascinating piece and it should be in big bold red letters more than half the visits came from referrals on Facebook quarter of a million votes six page views for per visit etc cetera, etc cetera. you get the point but at the end of the day what they found was that their effort in social media was the key driver to the success of the launch of the cube in Canada and you know we see this for small organizations we see it for large organizations uh, you know when we really track this uh, the numbers almost always come out in our favor. Uh, so last couple of things, a couple of resources uh, to give you guys before you uh, before you head out. Lots of different tools out there. Um, Patty Track is one of them that we use. Uh, Google Analytics, uh, Web Trends for some organizations, you know, things like URL shorteners. The number of tools that are out there, we could do an entire webinar on tools. Uh, what I want to throw out there for you guys are three quick things that I think you'll find valuable. Uh, First is the demand metrics dashboard uh, that we mentioned, and then the Nielsen metrics dashboard. Both of those are outstanding. Again, the demand metric one, uh, AMA one, is, a, is quite simple. Um, you know, the one that uh, Mr. Nielsen put together is quite complex and full-featured. It's a great tool. And then uh, we'll have a post out a little bit later today with uh, all the resources, actually, that we use to, to put together this deck, all the white papers, all of the... Uh, blog posts and tools and things like that that we use internally and uh, hopefully as you uh, you know move down your social ROI path uh, you know some of those resources will be of use to you so you'll see an email from uh, go to webinar with the follow-up here within about 24 hours um, you know so that link will be in there as well and uh, you can uh, start your weekend off right measuring some uh, social media return on investment you know, of course, we know what happens. Uh, you know, you've always done what you've always done. You always get what you've always got, uh, as our little cartoon tells us here. Uh, you know, but we uh, have ineffective strategies, ineffective activity, uh, you know, and ultimately uh, that's not the way to convince management, right? You know, having a, a good handle on ROI, and as you can see, I hope you can see, uh, through today, it's not all that hard, right? Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit less to it than we... Uh, you know, then uh, we sometimes make it out to be uh, once we get going on it, right? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, really appreciate uh, the, the time today. Uh, the next month's webinar, you'll see some info about that coming out shortly. It's going to be on thought leadership, and we're going to have a guest uh, in for that webinar as well. Uh, so you'll all see emails about that. So thanks a lot. Have a uh, great first weekend of May, and uh, any questions about social ROI, feel free to email or tweet. So have a great weekend.